artist Justin Evans. The name of the poem is Pastoral. It's for Grant Sumption. And it starts with an epigraph by James Alby Cox. Like iron in the earth, today's sunrise comes red, ready to sit dominion over everything in this country. So, the poem. Out in the west fields, frost still covers the bare earth left shorn after the second cut of alfalfa. Late November blackbirds pick over the remnants of wilted corn stalks on the periphery reapers could not touch. Where we used to shoot pheasant and muskrat, new houses have been built, planted into earth that have lost relevance in this age. High up in the canyon, cattle have all been brought down, but a few places remain for silence to stretch out like evening shadows. Not everything is lost, but more of us each day forget the touch of rough pine or the rhythmic sweep of brushing down a horse. There is no denial of moments in the air, but that which has been lost will never return. My major inspiration is actually making a connection with people, uh, whether that be one-on-one, -on -one, whether that be in a group of people, I really have a strong desire to make a, an intellectual and almost spiritual, I guess, communal uh, connection with people. And I found that poetry is probably my personal best way of doing that, making that connection with people. Well, uh, it's about my hometown. And Grant Sumption, who the poem is for, is a lifelong friend of mine. And his family uh, own cattle and own a ranch. And uh, I was their neighbor in their town home. There's the people would have houses in the home or in the town, and then they would have their ranch houses and acreage out on the outside of town. And I'm writing a book right now about coming home. So this poem is about returning home, almost the Tom Wolf idea, you can never go home, but I am coming home. So this is realizing that my home has changed, my hometown has changed, I've changed, and it's changed, and part of its change is because I've changed. Alright, so I'm going to answer the second part first because that's the easier part for me to answer. I've been experimenting with uh, poems for this book that come in two uh, symmetrical stanzas, and that's how this is written. It's not a prescribed form or recognized form like a villanelle or a sonnet, uh, but I'm trying something out with this particular book and writing a lot of the poems in two. Uh, symmetrical stanzas. Uh, there is no set meter and there is no set rhyme scheme or anything like that, but I'm trying something with that. Uh, my process for writing this poem, uh, well, first, I've been in the zone, I guess is how you would call it. I don't know what you feel as a writer, but I feel sort of like when I'm in the zone, I sit down and I start writing and I start typing and it may take a couple of false starts or that sort of thing and that's what happened here. I sat down and I started typing out a few lines and they weren't working so I just would you know, come up with something else and this caught around line three or four and I immediately knew where the poem was going to go from there and I also knew immediately that this poem was going to be dedicated to my friend Grant. Uh, it'd be uh, twofold. For uh, every poem that you attempt to write, you should read 30 or 40 poems. And that's, that's a small uh, percentage. It really should be more like 100 poems to every poem you try to write. And also, um, I would say that a great tip for writing poetry the actual writing is find uh, a time, find a place, and show up every day 
ready to write. And sooner or later, your brain will start to come to the conclusion that this is writing time, and you will start to write. Uh, I'd go with Ed Hirsch's model. Uh, I, I'm a big believer in his model on how to read a poem. Uh, the first thing is decide whether you like it or not. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is to ask yourself why you like it or why you don't like it. The third question is to try to figure out what inside this piece of writing makes it a poem whether it's figurative language, whether it's rhythm and sound, uh, whether it is a particular metaphor or the way it makes you feel. And then, after you've answered those three questions, that's when you start to worry about meaning. Don't rush into meaning. Uh, sometimes, you know, you don't have that luxury, but if you have the luxury to sit down with the poem, read it. Make a decision whether you like it or not before you even worry about trying to figure out what it means. I understand for school that that's a big thing, but you know, don't be afraid of the poem. Just don't worry so much about tackling it right away. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go back to 1997, and I have been writing poetry for 12 years by then, I'm, I'm almost 52 now, I've been writing poetry since I was a teenager, but uh, it was when I was a sophomore in college that I ran across David Kirby's poem, Summer of the Cuban Missile Crisis, where I realized how much poetry could really do. It was a watershed moment for me. That poem showed me that a poem just doesn't have to be a pretty picture about something. It isn't about some oh, far-off intellectual idea. It can be a story. It can be a means to share that moment. And that's where, why I came to the idea of, this, of communion and connecting with people. That's the poem that taught me. Um, well, let's see. Uh, the best book of poetry that I've read so far this year is C. Dale Young's latest uh, uh, book. I can't remember the title all of a sudden, but C. Dale Young is a poet that everybody should be familiar with. And I also think that, uh, let's see, who's Steve Kistelitz's uh, uh, new book is amazing. So those are two poets that I've read recently that have just blown my socks off.